Thank you for watching NBC2 News Now. I'm Andrea Hovell. Here are the top stories right now. A Cape Coral teen is safe tonight after police say a man tried to abduct her while walking her dog. It happened on Friday night on Del Prado Boulevard South. She was able to get away, but as NBC's Trent Kelly found out, she didn't escape unharmed. I'm a little shocked. Uh, it's, it's pretty quiet back here. Neighbors are on edge. Def definitely blown away. Wouldn't and expect it. Jonathan Planthaber lives right next to the KFC on Del Prado Boulevard. This part of Cape especially is very quiet. But not anymore. He's going to be watching his two young daughters extra close from now on following an attempted abduction right near his home. You wouldn't think that all the people that we call neighbors would be considered prey for somebody else. According to police, around 930 Friday night, an 18 year old girl was walking her dog through this very neighborhood when a man in a dark car pulled up right next to her and and told her she had a nice dog. But that's when the politeness ended. Police say that man then grabbed the woman's arm and tried to pull her into his car. Luckily, the woman was saved by her own dog, which then lunged at the man and may have bit his arm. I work nights a lot, so this is definitely uh, something that's concerning. The victim told police the man was driving a dark four-door car and that he appeared to be in his mid-40s with a goatee and possibly had an eye injury. Definitely not going to be having the girls or, or wife or mother out walking around at night, that's for sure. As these neighbors now take precaution. I'll keep an eye out for strange vehicles when there's kids around. They hope the man never returns or his injuries next time may be worse than a dog bite. Keep an eye out, get, keep the phone handy, and if anybody is acting out of place or shady or harassing anybody, we'll do what we have to do. In Cape Coral, Trent Kelly, NBC2. The warnings about West Africa's Ebola outbreak are dire. Tonight, scientists in England are fast-tracking tests on an Ebola vaccine. As NBC reports, those scientists are optimistic about the vaccine's chances for success. The Ebola virus is out of control. The World Health Organization warns that cases are doubling every three to four weeks. The first wave of U.S. soldiers is now on the ground in Liberia, setting up field hospitals. This will give people, the healthcare workers, hope that if they go in and they contract this deadly virus, they can be treated here. Thousands of miles away at Oxford University in England, a safety trial for an Ebola vaccine that would normally take years has been shortened to weeks. The drug protected monkeys from the virus, and for the first time, it's being injected into humans. 60 volunteers. I heard it all on the radio. It made me think, this is really sad what is going on out in West Africa. I, and what could I, I do? Nick Owen got his dose 10 days ago. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. No side effects. No side effects. Owen works for Doctors Without Borders, the group on the front line of the outbreak. But he volunteered as a private citizen. I've you know, seen stories uh, from West Africa every day, and it's, uh, it's a horrendous virus. Um, it's ripping families apart. The goal, like with the U.S. military mission, is to protect first responders so more doctors and nurses can safely care for the sick. The vaccine can't cure this terrible disease, but it could slow it down. Scientists will have early data next month. If the vaccine is safe, they hope to have 20,000 shots ready to go by January. Kelly Kobieya, NBC News, London. Meantime, another case of enterovirus is being confirmed here in Florida. The eight-year-old boy lives in Escambia County. The first Florida patient is a 10-year-old girl in Polk County. Enterovirus D68 has spread to 46 states with more than 600 people affected, mostly children. A young New Jersey boy died earlier this week from the virus. Luxury living in an unlikely place. Fort Myers city leaders want to lure investors to neighborhoods near the city of Palms Park to build high rises and shops and condos. It sounds nice, but a deadly shooting overnight could hinder those plans. NBC2's Ty Russell reports. Very heartbreaking, yeah, but there ain't nothing I can do about it. 81 year old Jamie Arrow thought he had seen it all until this a swarm of Fort Myers police officers outside his apartment. Everybody started coming and start crying after they seen and heard what would happen. Police say someone shot and killed James Nelson around two Saturday morning at Twin Oaks Apartments on Central Avenue and Lafayette Street. It's only a block away from the city of Palms Park and the Skadium Recreation Center. Investigators and neighbors want to know who's responsible. And we have nothing to do with it. 
but I stay in my place. City leaders in Fort Myers are closely watching the neighborhoods around the city of Palms Park, and they recently unveiled a plan they hope will cut back on some of the crime happening in this area. The nieces and nephews and little cousins and stuff, I held like that. I don't like to see it going on in the neighborhood. Neighbor Drew Simmons wants a change. City leaders agree they already started calling this area Midtown, but they want it to look more like its new name, trying to lure investors here for high rises and office buildings. They hope a new set of neighbors and visitors will curb crime. A lot of people come through here, passing, you know what I'm saying? And they don't live here. Arrow points to the visitors now as the problem, not he and his neighbors. In Fort Myers, Ty Russell, NBC2. This is the eighth homicide this year in the city of Fort Myers. Compared to last year, police responded to 10. The first gubernatorial debate is in the books. Governor Rick Scott and former Governor Charlie Chris butted heads on several key issues, from health care to medical marijuana. NBC's Ari Odzer picks up our coverage. So how do you say sling mud at my opponent in Spanish? Charlie Chris and Rick Scott got down and dirty in English. Charlie's never taken responsibility for anything. I'm more than happy to take responsibility for any of my actions. And we Meanwhile, Libertarian candidate Adrian Wiley was outside looking in, barred from the debate. Executives behind these media organizations are only going to allow the Republicans and Democrats to be heard. They're and so it went, the two men disagreeing on virtually every issue, with Scott frequently saying Chris has changed his position to align with the political winds. I don't support recreational. I don't support recreational use of marijuana. I support medicinal, medical marijuana for medical purposes. Thank you very much, Governor Scott. So let's keep remembering, Charlie had this job, and he's taken this position today, but he did nothing while he was governor. Also mentioned during last night's debate, gay marriage. This issue continues to dominate headlines. Today, hundreds gathered for the fifth annual Pride Fest in Fort Myers. 35 states recognize gay marriage or civil unions, excluding Florida. State Attorney General Pam Bondi recently appealed a move to allow them in four counties. Governor Scott has publicly defended Bondi's actions, while his primary opponent, Charlie Crist, says he will not fight to uphold the ban on gay marriage. Remember, you can count on NBC2 News Now for the latest information. Thank you for watching. Stay connected on air, online, and on the go. Everywhere you are, count on NBC2 first. Thank you for watching NBC2 News Now. I'm Andrea Hubble. A bad break. We all cringe whenever someone breaks a bone so savagely that it tears through the skin. But what impact does that have on overall healing? Amy Osher fills us in in today's Health Matters. Each sporting season, someone suffers a gruesome bone break. During a basketball scrimmage this summer, Indiana Pacers player Paul George suffered a devastating compound fracture. Any fracture in which the bone comes out the skin, which is a little more severe than a normal fracture because now you run the risk of infection which can be a pretty bad complication when trying to heal a fracture. Less than 10% of fractions are open or compound. Most times the bone snap is the result of a catastrophic collision. Typically that kind of fracture is associated with higher energy like a car wreck or motorcycle wreck and we'll even see it occasionally in collision sports like football and soccer and it's pretty rare to see it in, in basketball. Having a compound fracture compounds the risk. At the time of the break the exposure to air exposes the area to bacteria. That can compound complicate the healing process. If it even makes the tiniest little poke hole because that means it's it's seen the bacteria in the air uh, which could lead to infection but the bigger the wound is and the more trauma there is to the exposed bone the more chance there is for complications such as infections or poor healing and the like. Depending on the severity and location, many compound fractures will need rods and hardware to repair the bone structure. Once in the healing stage, recovery is often more predictable than an injury to a tendon or ligament. Assuming he heals it without infection or other complications, he'll probably have as quick or faster recovery than if it was, say, his ACL or other ligaments in his knees. Treated quickly and properly, a bad break can still have a good outcome. For Lee Memorial Health System, I'm Amy Osher. 
Well, there was a sea of pink at Cambier Park in Naples this morning. Thousands participated in the American Cancer Society's annual Making Strides Against Breast Cancer 5K Walk. Light pink shirts were given to breast cancer survivors participating in the walk today. This is our biggest fundraiser because every dollar raised at this event goes towards breast cancer research directly and for local programs and services for breast cancer patients and survivors. The walk raised $107,000. Almost 2,000 people participated. Spooky, strange, and slimy Mad Science Saturday at the Imaginarium in Fort Myers. Kids and families got a chance to explore the science of strange. The event featured face painting for kids, a body biology lab, slime room, and a bat cave. Anyone who wore a costume got $2 off admission. You're watching NBC2 News Now, and remember, for breaking news, weather, and information, go online to NBC-2.com. I'm Andrea Hubble, and thanks for watching. Stay connected on air, online.